All right, everybody, this is Burke, and um, today I'm going to show you how I made the bass patch for my for my remix of Series by JL Sanders featuring Armour out on Dream Eater Records. So um, before I show you how I made it, I'm just going to play a little preview of the tune. So yeah, you get the idea. Um, originally, I made the bass patch in Wavetable by Ableton. It's their own like native uh, Wavetable plugin. Um, so yeah, here's what it sounds like. And that consists of a few different layers, instances of Wavetable grouped inside an instrument rack playing the same notes. Um, so the top layer is this mid sub one. Um, it's just um, a square and a sign, uh, one with FM and some tuning and the other one with the modern FM setting. And then what I've done is I have them set in the filter mode inside the wavetable is set to split. So oscillator one is going to filter one and oscillator two is going to filter two. Um, and then the other layer that makes up the sound is this mid comb one. So that's just a that's just oscillator two, I believe, being sent to a bandpass filter. And then there's just an operator underneath, which is just um, it's just like a sine wave filling up the sub frequencies. So here's what they sound like solo. Oh, just to add as well, the mid comb and the mid sub layers here. Um, filter two has twenty four decibels of distortion on it, and filter one has about three decibels of distortion on it. So it's um, that's what kind of gives it the grit. And then on the entire bus of instruments, there's like a cut, like a dip around one hundred and thirty hertz. Um, and then there's a compressor on the entire rack, which. It's doing a little bit. So uh, what I did from there was um, I sent the MIDI track out to a return channel in Ableton. Um, you could achieve similar results by, if you use like Logic or Fruity Loops or, or Pro Tools or whatever, you can just set up an audio um, or an auxiliary track or an audio track and then send part of your MIDI channel out to the out to the auxiliary or the audio track. Um, it's just basically, it's just parallel processing. So the idea is that you blend the super heavy parallel, like a processed version of your signal with a non-processed version. And uh, yeah, it just gives for like nice, nice results, nice sounds. Um, so on my return track, I have a distortion rack that I made in Ableton. It's actually the same rack I used for all my bass distortion in my tune Dracula, which is on my first record. Um, so yeah, I have, I just have a filter with about three and a half decibels of distortion, um, a phaser plugin from Native Instruments called Phasus. It was given out for free a few years ago. A frequency shifter plugin, which is actually not doing anything. So I don't really know. I, I, I don't know what happened there. And uh, then I have a bit crusher here and then Ableton Saturator with the Wave Shaper uh, setting on it. And then, yeah, just I've just messed with the settings so it sounded good. And then I have another auto filter at the end of it with just a little bit cut off the highs, but nothing really major. So, yeah. And then after that, I duplicated the MIDI track and then I muted different instances of Wavetable and unmuted the other instances of Wavetable just to create that variation. So here's what this one sounds like. So it's a little bit different, but it's not too far different from the original one. 
And uh, essentially what I did from there was I recorded all those, I got those two MIDI tracks and then basically played them and muted, muted and unmuted different channels and basically just recorded in a bunch of different takes of me playing with the filters and like the distortion and the drive and whatever. And uh, here's what those loops sounded like. So yeah, it's pretty pretty um, simple stuff. Just a bunch of different audio clips chopped and spliced together, and then some of them are reversed and yeah, like nothing really major. And then um, what I did from there actually as well, which is worth noting, is that I sent the same audio track that was already resampled um, back out to the return channel or the auxiliary again to to parallel process it yet again. Um, it just it just added some extra grit to it. There, I don't think there was any real like logical kind of idea behind it. It was just kind of like mess around with the sounds till they sound good. And then from there, um, I put them into an arrangement. And if you just look at the screen, you can see down here like one is like loop two, next is like loop five, next is chop bass, next is loop two, next is loop five. So I just sat there and I just drag and drop different clips in and chopped them according to the drums till eventually I got the main kind of like loop for the song, which is this. <laughs> Um, on the audio track, I did actually have a little bit of multiband compression, um, just targeting around 170 hertz, which sounds like this. Um, the the effect that I had is very, it is very subtle, but to me, to me, it made the difference in the tune. Like when I was when I was making it, I just thought it sounded better with that little bit cut around that frequency range. But I didn't want to cut it out completely, and I kind of wanted that sort of breeding effect that compression can give. So that's what I did there. And then underneath, I added the same one of the bass clips, except I think it was reversed, and it it follows like the rhythm of the kick essentially, just to add more rhythm to the tune. So yeah, that's that essentially. And um, throughout the drop, there is a sub that is following the rhythm of the the mid the mid range bass, which sounds like this. So the first sub just follows all the like the downbeats on the start of every single bar, and uh, that's just a 808 that I made and it's in my it's in my sample kit actually called the Burke sample kit you can get that from burkeproducer.com or from my band camp but uh, all the links are in my Instagram in my bio and stuff and then the second sub layer was operator I believe which just yeah just a sign so if I just play that main loop with and without the subs you can really see the impact it has on the tune so yeah like if if those subs weren't there the tune would just it would, it would just it would just be shit like it just sounds dead so here's it with the subs
So yeah, that's it essentially. Um, nothing, nothing really too crazy if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions regarding sound design, um, shoot me a message on Instagram. It's at Burke underscore IE. If you want to buy the record, you can get it from all the digital outlets online. Um, if you want to buy the vinyl, you can get it from Idle Hands if you're in Bristol or Unearthed Sounds or uh, from Dreamier themselves direct. Um, yeah, thanks for watching the tutorial and uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. See ya. Honor, 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 honor.